You're watching Good on Paper, a bookish channel. Hi, everybody. We Hello. are back, and this is Lexi is here with me today. Rachel, unfortunately, could not make it. It is crazy summer season, family in town madness. So it is just me and Lexi today. Um, so this will be really fun. <laughs> it will. I'm so excited to talk with you, Jenny. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking forward to having you on this podcast, I think for a while, because I know like when Rachel and I started this podcast, we were like, we want to have guests. And there were some people in mind that immediately popped into my head that I wanted to have as a guest. And like you were one of them, like from the <laughs> beginning. Thank <laughs> so. you. Well, I said it earlier, but I absolutely adore your content. I think your Instagram is so much fun and I just, it's an honor to be here. So. Oh, thank you. I, I don't know if listeners, if you do not follow Lexi already, you should, because she also has the cutest content. Like I just love her style. Like it's so bright and girly and like kind of minimalist. I don't know how to describe it. You just have to go look for yourself, but I love it. And sometimes when I get sick of my stuff, I'm like, man, I wish I was doing something more like, I don't know, like how Lexi <laughs> does. So I really do like it. It's so cute. That is a huge compliment. And I feel like you really hit the nail on the head with the girly and <laughs> yeah. going on. Yeah, and it is. Yeah. I just <laughs> always have such like content creation FOMO like I'll come across a new account and I'm like man I should have done that style and then like I come across another one I'm like man I should have done that that looks fun like it's like you know how you the grass is always greener <laughs> oh totally yeah oh, it's so tempting you see somebody doing something online you're like oh should I try that and I think it's yeah. good at least for me it really pushes me like okay mm -hmm. make this shot more creative like yeah. what's your let me go check out Jenny's account <laughs> yeah no I agree I mean I just think, you know, like we're all the body of Christ. Like some people are the eyes, some people are the ears and the mouth. And so I look at like everybody has a different style on here. And it's really cool to see because I think we're all different people. and We're all called to bring something different, even Instagram aesthetics. Like I don't think any space is too small for God. Like I think we can be called by him with different aesthetics, too. I really do. That sounds crazy. But, you know, I think it's true. <laughs> It is so true. It's, oh my gosh, that actually reminds me um, just of the whole idea of Imago Dei, you know, like all of us are the reflection of God, all the different parts of him, of his heart and personality. So, it, you know, my husband sometimes describes it as like a puzzle, like we're all the different, we're all the reflection of God. And when you put us all together, mm -hmm. we're that puzzle that shows the picture of his glory and his beauty and just a reflection of who he is. And so if any one of us were missing from the Instagram feed, like, you know, it's that idea of like, no, we need all of the different perspectives, mm -hmm. all different styles and takes, and it's all beautiful. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And then without it, we wouldn't have met each other. So <laughs> I know I am super grateful for the bookstagram community. Cause when was I going to meet you, Jenny? And so many different people yeah. that I just like, have had great conversations with and been inspired by and it just it, there's that camaraderie because mm -hmm. it's not likely that you would meet someone in your town I mean you don't usually come across somebody who's a writer who loves books you know big reader um, like all of those different elements combined so yeah. yeah yeah it's really such an amazing community so yeah we're really glad that we have this podcast just so we can have interviews because we're just like chatting with people you know <laughs> absolutely i'm always down for a chat yay yeah so we're so happy to have you um so we kind of like blew over the introduction but let's do a little introduction so lexi is a writer she is a huge reader as you can tell by the cute books behind her um she is a mama she's a christian and she is the maker of super cute bookish merch and and don't you and your husband have like a, a faith um themed merch store as well so you have the books and you also have more just like faith-based um clothing store as well too yeah we totally do it's called worth apparel co it's a faith-based company um just with shirts to kind of get conversations going about jesus and they're you know cool fit so yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this bookish looks tea um etsy so yeah 
Oh, cool. Yeah, I just love your story. You have such cute styles. Like, how did you come up with, like, the design? Like, are you a, like, pretty design savvy person? So we are totally a husband and wife team. It's very 50-50. Um, I come to him with basically like the vision. So I'll say, mm -hmm. I want it to say this, like this cute C.S. Lewis quote or this color, this font style. And he is the brains behind the Photoshop and Illustrator. So <laughs> he's really, really good at going in and actually, you know, bringing my vision to life. And then he'll put it on the shirt and be like, what do you think of this? And we'll kind of make adjustments. Um, but yeah, we totally do it together. We brainstorm together and it's just a lot of fun. It's a fun thing to do, uh, with your spouse. So I enjoy it. It's a blast. And I love, I mean, having the shirts at home, I feel like on days where I'm just like, I don't know what to wear. I just grab one of these shirts. I'm like, okay, perfect. So like I'm a writer. Yeah. So I'm a writer. <laughs> yeah. And it's so much cooler cause you made it like it's your vision and everything. Yeah. yeah it's a I blast. I mean, I don't know. I don't talk about our store much because it's not really writing related, but my fiance and I actually made a clothing store like a few years ago. I know <laughs> the things you're learning about me today, but um, we made it because um, he is like a huge Bitcoiner and I am too, mostly because of him. But um, so for conferences and stuff, uh, he wanted to wear, like he had all these ideas for design. So we're like, well, let's just, you know, because there's all these print it yourself things that we found out about. So we're like, well, let's just design our own designs. And we did it using like an online vector thing. I mean, it's not even like a program. It was like an online thing. And we, the two of us just like came up with all these designs, made all the clothes and it was just for ourselves. And then we were like, well, why don't we make a store? So then we set up a whole store and then so now when we're traveling around going to conferences, we're like wearing our stuff and people are like, oh, yeah, I want to buy that. <laughs> and but no, I'm right with you. Like just being on a design team together with your loved one is so fun and getting to wear your stuff. I mean, you know, more people should try it out. I definitely recommend. <laughs> I recommend it, too. It's very fun when the order arrives. I'm sure you guys have definitely experienced this because you open it up yes. and you're like, oh, my gosh, it worked. <laughs> uh -huh. It yeah, looks like, so good. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, it's, so it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. Yeah, we used, uh, I think we used Printful. And yeah, it's just insane. Because I, I, I know with modern technology, like all this stuff is possible that you can send in a design and they'll print it. But yeah, it just blows my mind every time <laughs> we get something. Yeah, I love that you can tailor it specifically to what you want. And you can even look at like, okay, what's the fabric type? Like, how is this going to mm -hmm. be soft? Like, is there, and we've had to test quite a few. We we did some test batches because we wanted the quality to be really good. Yes. So we had a few different shirts come in. We're like, man, these are pretty rough. Like, they're not very comfortable. Right? <laughs> so yeah. we kind of switched things up and, you know, made adjustments. And I'm very happy with them now. I love, all of them are super comfortable. So, yeah. 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 Soft t-shirts for the win. Like those are the best. <laughs> like my go-to writing shirt. I'm like, yes, I need to be inspired. I need to feel like a writer. So I'm going to wear it. I'm going to declare yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody, if you guys are thinking of starting a merch store for like your books, cause I know some people do like um, fan stuff for their books or anything hit up Lexi, hit up me. We can help you out. Like it's so much fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Hit me up for sure. I'd love to chat. Yeah. So I'm really curious, Lexi, I've been so excited to ask you about your writing because I know you write YA, yeah. but I don't know a whole lot about what you write. And of course, you know, if you have to keep things some secret, you know, I understand, like, don't tell us everything because, you know, there is the marketing aspect and you don't want to give away too much. But what can you tell us about, like, what you like to write and any projects you're working on? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I am currently writing a wife fantasy and it's a, at about 86,000 words. So it's basically written all the way to the end, but it's in the revision phase. And um, I brought it with me to a little conference called Realm Makers. Some of you guys watching this may know <laughs> about that conference. 
Um, and yeah, it's one that I got the idea for back in 2013, but I started taking more seriously in 2020. And so I really was like, okay, I don't want it to just be an idea anymore. I want to have a writing routine and work on this every day. And, and I really want to publish one day. So the dream is to traditionally publish. We'll see, you know, where my path leads, if it ends up going that direction, but I'm very hopeful and excited to keep pushing forward and pursuing that goal. But um, yeah, it's basically a portal fantasy. So um, there's lots cool. of different worlds and without giving too much away, I'll just give you like maybe just a little taste of it so you can kind of get the vibes. But um, yeah, I would say this book is kind of a blend between A Wrinkle in Time meets Howl's Moving Castle. And the protagonist is a lot like Tress from Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. So with kind of those things in mind, um, I created something that's basically like a coming of age story. And it deals with a lot of found family themes and just like, you know, the trials of growing up and step, you know, going from girlhood to womanhood and um, kind of like finding yourself and um, figuring out who to trust and what you want your life to look like. So those are some of the themes. Um, oh, I can't wait to read it. That sounds perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. There's a lot. Um, when I first got the idea, you know, where I just thought, man, I want, what are, how can I talk about these different things? And um, how can I explore different worlds? And, you know, I just love that. I love, I love a big world um, with lots of places to explore. And this one really centers around a magic traveling house. So it's one that- Like in Howl's Moving Castle. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it can access different worlds and it picks people up at the ends of their worlds when things are just falling apart mm -hmm. for them. And so- the family that lives in the house is kind of a band of misfits. And that's what brings us to the protagonist, which is the main misfit in the story. And uh, when she takes on an enchanted oath to find the last safe world, and she has to do it in one week. Um, so there's a romance where she teams up with the inventor that runs the house and they have to race through time in this shattered world to find the last safe world. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a fun story. Oh my goodness, what a book pitch. Like, if I was a publisher right now, I'm like, I'm taking this. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. That sounds so good. Like, the stakes, if she has the week, and then an inventor love interest. Like, I mean, how much hotter can you get? Like, I love that. <laughs> it, it's, it's definitely the sweet romance for sure. And it just, yeah. yeah. It's, I love it. I love them too. I love everyone in the house, the little quirky family of misfits that come together and they form this found family. And um, yeah, so she, it, it's, it's, it's a story I've had in my head for a long time and I'm, I'm really excited to see it hopefully come to completion within, you know, by the end of this year, I'll have more information for you on, on it. But it's currently, uh, like I said, in revision stages, but I did have some great feedback at the conference I went to. So I oh, recently nice. submitted it to an acquisitions editor. So I'm hoping to hear back soon. Oh, that's so exciting. I mean, I'm working right now with indie publishing, but more and more I'm thinking, you know, maybe with like my next book, I want to try probably small publishing houses. I don't know if I ever want to do like try any of the big ones, but that's something I've been thinking more about, you know, submission to agents or small publishing houses. So that's super exciting. You're already doing it. <laughs> Thank you. I know. Good for you. And I always tell people, you know, if you have a dream, if you've been thinking about writing a book for a long time, my biggest advice is just go for it. Mm -hmm. You know, just open up a Google Doc and allow yourself to be messy, write all of your ideas down. You know, if you, if you want to, sometimes it's fun to start with a notebook and just start jotting down everything you mm. know, everything that you are excited to write about and just see where it takes you. And, you know, if you just write a little bit every day, that's how books are made. So even yes. if it's 10 minutes a day. Yeah. Yeah, really. I, I really definitely underestimated the power of smaller goals because I, I have not 
finish well other than this other one but this is the first time I've actually finished a first draft in like three years because I was setting my goals so high and I was like oh I'll write it in a month and I would just always give up and drop off but I was writing a Kindle Vela so I was just writing two episodes per month so I was writing twice a week that was it and I finished it in six months and now it's so funny because we're in the same stage um because Mine is YA fantasy and it's around the same length and I'm in the first revisions and it's also very like, I would say it's like Howl's Moving Castle meets like Caraval meets Harry Potter-ish, <laughs> like I, I guess, yeah. All of my favorite everythings. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it sounds like our books are kind of book twins. <laughs> oh yeah. Their besties, they would get along great. Yes, they really would. I have a lot of like friendship and kind of found family. It's not like, um, it's more like friendship band, but it that could kind of be in the found family theme too. But yeah, and a magic school and no moving houses. But I love that. I can't wait to read your book, Little Traveling oh House. Gosh. I know we need to swap writing. That'd be fun. Yes, that would be really fun. So we had a question from one of our listeners asking, what are some of your tips for taking good book photos? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I actually love to take photos. I used to be a professional photographer and for a hot minute, I was also a wedding filmmaker. So it was a lot of trial and error. In mm -hmm. that. Um, but you know what? Before I had any fancy equipment, I just started on my phone and I just started to learn composition, you know, how to line up a shot. Um, you know, with the books, I put them on my bedspread because I have great natural light in my bedroom and I have a nice big white bedspread. And I thought, well, you know, I'm kind of going for this bright and airy look on my account. Um, you know, I want it to feel cozy and colorful and bright. And so um, you know, I just start putting the books on my bedspread. I kind of obey the rule of thirds. So when it comes to props, I usually have the book and like two other props. I try not to clutter it too much, although that can be a fun look. But um, I try to keep it to where the book really pops. So I'll have that. And sometimes I even, this is really sneaky, but I will take like, <laughs> I want the book to really pop from the bedspread. So I'll take like a sock and I'll just roll it up and stick it under the book and it just like pops it up a little bit. So the oh. cover just goes off a little more. That's and, so smart. Uh, yeah, it's a, try it sometime. It's great. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll put like maybe, you know, I have a couple go-to props. So I have like my magnifying glass or my pink mug, or maybe I'll just use like a great thing you can use is just like flowers from outside or just mm -hmm. natural elements, you know? Um, and, and yeah, I just take like a million <laughs> bunch of photos and then I usually edit in Lightroom classic. So, uh, once I get it off my camera, I use a, uh, Sony a seven three DSLR camera for all my photos, pretty much occasionally my iPhone, but most of the time my, uh, Sony. And then I just pop them into Lightroom Classic and I just bump up that brightness a little bit, add a little curve and, you know, some sharpening and just very light. I try not to do too much editing, but just enough that it really pops. Um, yeah, and that's that's kind of what I've been doing for the last year or so with my books. Oh, that's so cool. I also use Lightroom. I love it. And I I used to edit a lot more, but now, you know, it's just like very minimal touches here and there, you know, and just let the photo kind of speak for itself and then try and like make it totally different than what it's because you can do that you can totally do that in lightroom you can take a bright sunny day and you can turn it into like a moody cloudy kind of look if you want but i kind of stopped doing that i'm like you know what i'm gonna reflect where i'm at i live in a very sunny place so <laughs> that's what you're getting no moodiness here <laughs> yeah, i yeah. love Kind of finding like okay what works because it's that balance of what works in my space but also yes. what style am i going for and if you can find like look around in your home or in your backyard or outside or wherever it is and just see okay what are the spaces that feel like the colors that i want to use mm -hmm. um, or the lighting that i want um 
you don't have to live in a fancy place necessarily. You know, I'm not showing off like my whole house. I'm just showing a little square of my bedspread. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is one wall that I use for my, if I'm, if I'm taking a picture of myself, but for the books, I just found like one little patch of ground that I thought looked cool. And honestly, that's all you need. Yeah, no, really. You just need a corner. You do not need your whole house to be aesthetic. Just need one area. You even just one area that you can make aesthetic just for picture taking. Like I bought white poster board because you guys are hearing it here first, but spoiler, Rachel and I are going to start doing some bookish flat lays on the podcast page. So we wanted to do like a white background and I just moved from, my dad moved out of town. So I'm now with my grandma and I just feel like my life is all over the place. I don't have a space. So I was like, I'm going to get a piece of white poster board and I can just move that wherever there's good lighting and I'll just take pictures of the books on that you know sometimes that's all you need like just some white poster board the rest of your house can be a shambles but it's fine <laughs> you in your pajamas and have like total yes. beds they usually have the mom bun going on so yeah. <laughs> like, no makeup i'm not like prepared <laughs> like i am right now so yeah, yeah and these yeah, books are here are like this is like all i got you know i don't have like the massive white you know i obviously mm -hmm. that's the dream, right someday i'd love to have the white built-ins you know love that look but this is my beautiful little yep. bookshelf and I love it. It's, it works for me. You know, it's small, but use what yeah, you got. Exactly. It looks so cute. And I think, I think it looks perfect. I definitely, I miss my bookshelf. Um, cause I had one and it was Brown and I, I painted it white in the garage. So I was like, I want it to oh, be white. And I'm sure, um, if you've been following me for a while, you guys probably remember when I used to have the white bookshelf and I would always film in front of it but I also don't have a lot of books so but you know I filled it up with my books and that was my little bookstagram corner you know because I just I feel like a lot of times we feel like we have to have like a lot of books or like cute bookish things behind us and as I discovered because like I said my dad moved out I sold the bookcase I didn't have room for it um I just went back to going outside because I'm like, you know what? Nature always looks pretty. I don't got to worry about making it look pretty. And I just brought a book with me, you know, so you don't always have to do like the bookshelf shot. If you don't have a good bookshelf, if it's not in front of the window so you can get good lighting, like that's OK. Like you can do something different and be creative. Absolutely. I love your nature shots and all the nature content that you do. And it's that's so true, you know, driving around and just finding a little spot in your town that you think is gorgeous yeah. and just taking some shots there. Nature, like you said, it's always pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's always pretty. And, you know, if it's parks or hiking trails, it's also free. So, like I said, you can live in maybe the not most aesthetic house and maybe you don't have the resources to make it look nice. Well, go find a park. Like, it's available to everybody, you know, and it'll look nice. <laughs> like, look, yeah. leave little acorn who's like exactly like it's great, great. <laughs> books in nature who doesn't love it <laughs> yeah so our other question that we got was okay this question kind of confused me but i think I, I know what it is it's so what are your five favorite most unpopular books so i'm thinking they're your favorites but they're like not everybody else's favorites is what I'm assuming this means. <laughs> I know. I thought, what a fun question. I'm really going to have yeah. to think, okay, what, what are books that I love, but are also mm -hmm. popular, which I know means different things to different people sometimes as far as like, oh, is it popular? Is it, maybe it's popular to one, you know, sort of like group of like people yeah. or, um, or maybe it's just not talked about on Instagram, but it's really yeah. popular outside of Instagram, especially with middle grade. I feel like there's so much middle grade that I don't see discussed mm -hmm. necessarily on Instagram, but it's because middle schoolers aren't on Instagram. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, but um, yeah, I really thought hard about this one and it, it was very specific. Um, five. <laughs> so <laughs> I wrote them down and I have one to share with you guys. Ooh. And it's called The Splendor by Brianna Shields. So this is a book that I immediately fell in love with. It kind of has similar vibes to what I described earlier, especially with me and Jenny's books. Um, you know, the Howl's Moving Castle feel, um, 
a wrinkle in time, you know, but I just love anything that is a magical hotel or tavern or inn. And that's exactly what this is. It's a magical. Oh so, um, yeah, it's basically about two sisters. One of them, the protagonist is Juliet and her whole life. She has dreamed of going to this hotel called the Splendor that sits high up on this hill above her town. Both her and her sister are orphaned. And so they dream of this place. And one day her sister gets to go to the hotel, but she comes back changed. She suddenly um, is acting really weird to Juliet and almost like she doesn't know her. And she's acting as if something really strange has happened. So Juliet goes on a mission to get into this hotel and figure out what happened to her sister. And there is a romance along the way with one of the, um, a boy that works in the hotel. And it's just a place that I really wanted to go, honestly. Um, <laughs> you know, when you read about a, a hotel room where the bathtub is always full of bubbles and it's warm all day long. And, you know, there's like garden atriums inside and, you know, ballrooms full of feasts with all sorts of, you know, delights that, you know, you could possibly imagine. So it's definitely a fantasy. It's called the Splendor for a reason. And it's really great. I don't know hear a lot of people talking about it. So that sounds perfect for me. I feel like I'm going to get so many good book recommendations from you today. <laughs> Yay! I love it. And That's like number one. But yeah, I have the other I have the other four. Do you want to hear them? The other four? Yes, of course. And we will uh, put all of this in the show notes below. That way everyone can find this easy access. So if don't worry if you're not like catching all the titles and everything, I'll put it all in the show notes. So you guys can get all these good book recs too. <laughs> Yay. Yes, most definitely. And honestly, I will, as you can probably tell, I am long-winded and chatty. So it was hard to choose only five. <laughs> oh, please give us more. If you have more, feel free to share them. <laughs> like, yeah, it this was is hard. a book podcast. <laughs> Yeah. It was so hard to pick only five, but, um, okay. This is one that I feel like you definitely never hear about on Instagram. And actually, sadly, I don't have the copy to show you, but they are the Augusta Goodnight mysteries. Have you heard of the Augusta Goodnight series? No, I haven't. Okay. So, um, they're older, but they are cozy mysteries. I used to read in high school and I actually used to trade them back and forth with my mom and my grandma. So we would share the books <laughs> and um, it's basically their murder mysteries that follow a different protagonist every book, but there's one character that comes in every time and that is the character's guardian angel. So it's a murder mystery with a little spice of like magical realism in there. So it'll have the protagonist. Usually it's a woman like, you know, in kind of like the middle of her life, having a really big crisis or some sort of like problem she's dealing with in her family. And Augusta Goodnight will show up and she will say, hey, I just want to let you know I'm your guardian angel. Well, actually, I'm a temp guardian angel. She, <laughs> so she says, you have a guardian angel, but she's on vacation right now. So I'm just assisting for the week. I'm here if you need me kind of a thing. And she reveals herself to the protagonist. And the protagonist is like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Like, who are you? Like, and then, but slowly over the course of the book, of course, they become really good friends and they solve the murder mystery together. So it's a really unique, uh, just series. I've never heard of anything else like it. It's very cozy. It's very sweet. Um, but it has that, that mystery element that I love too. So I just, they're hard to put down for me. I love those books. That sounds really good. That also sounds like something I would love to read too. So thank you. <laughs> you should, you should. I love how the angel is described. Augusta, they say that she smells like strawberries because she works in the strawberry fields in heaven. That's her normal oh, job. I love that. It's just adorable. So there's that one. And then the other one that I love is a middle grade book that I wish more people talked about. And it is from the Keepers series by Ted Sanders. It's called The Box and the Dragonfly. So it's about a boy who um, figures out that he, uh, he basically discovers a secret society of people mm -hmm. that um, can connect with special objects. Like each person has one special object that they connect with and they can do magic through it. So he connects with this magical box 
and um, it plays with time, which is really cool. And um, there's one girl that, uh, you know, she can like disappear through walls and stuff. It's just, they each have all these different powers and it's such a unique, uh, beautifully written middle grade book. I wish more people discussed it, but yeah, it was one of my favorites. That sounds really good. Oh my gosh. Like my TBR list is getting so long. <laughs> I feel like you and me, Jenny, have similar tastes. So we do. <laughs> yeah. So that was okay. So I told you three. So then the other ones I would say are honestly just, even though I know these are popular, but Agatha Christie, I have so many favorite Agatha Christie books and you know, they're not new. They're not the flashy big splash books coming out. Mm -hmm you know, on the bestseller list, but there are so many classics worth just losing yourself in. And Agatha Christie is one of them, in my opinion. I think that if anything, if you want to learn to write, Agatha Christie was mm -hmm. an incredible writer. Just her, her books are a masterclass on tension and suspense and withholding and cliffhangers. Like she's really, really good at all of that. Yeah, I think I've only read one Agatha Christie book so far. And I think I was I was a teenager and we are at somebody's house and that's what they had to read. So that's what I read. But honestly, like my book, I need some help with like the cliffhangers and the tension and the mystery. So I should probably maybe read some Agatha Christie to help me out because I'm struggling. <laughs> if anything, <laughs> just be inspired. You know, sometimes I'll read yeah. a book that's very different than what I'm trying to write, but I learn so much yes. through the writing style. Yeah, the voice. Um, one that I recommend by her, um, gosh, I love The Murder of Roger Croyd has a really cool twist. And The ABC Murders is really good. That is a part of the Poirot series. She has the Poirot detective books. And then if you like, there's another one uh, featuring Miss Marple, who is this cute old lady oh, yeah. that solves mysteries. So those might be more your vibe. But um, yeah, Miss Marple is adorable. And it's just fun to watch her solve murder mysteries in her little British village, you know? <laughs> so that one's really fun. And then the last one is definitely one no one here would have heard, I'm assuming. It's very old. And it's actually, guys, it's a parenting book. So it's not fiction at all, but it is called The Baby Whisperer by Tracy Hogg. And I swear by it. I, it helped me sleep train my baby and help me with so many different elements uh, of just like the infant stage and, you know, the baby stage. So it's just, I love it. The, the author is uh, British. Sadly, she has now passed away, but um, there's just so much in The Baby Whisperer that really rings true. It's kind of that gentle parenting style meets love and logic. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just such a refreshing take and just makes so much sense. And it worked, it worked beautifully for our child. So I definitely recommend it to all the new moms that I meet. I'm like, check out the baby whisperer. It's so, so good. And it gives you so many great tips and tricks and it's very helpful. Oh, I will definitely be putting that on my list too. Cause yeah, we're going to hopefully start trying to have a family like right after we get married. So like, that's kind of been on my mind. It's like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't always happen right away, but I'm like, oh my goodness, like, you know, this could be you next year. Like, you better be ready. So that is something I'll definitely be checking out, like, for sure. <laughs> oh, good. I know it's definitely one that I am like, what would we do without the baby whisperer? We've said it multiple <laughs> times. Like, this is our favorite parenting book. So, yeah, I definitely. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Those are all such good recommendations, and I will again, I'll make sure and write them all down so nobody forgets. But mostly me. I, I, I need to write them down so I don't forget because I definitely want to read all those books. Great. Yeah, they are definitely favorites of mine. Definitely check them out. Yeah. yeah, I wish that there was more middle grade, too, on Instagram. But, yeah, it's just, I don't know, not talked about. No, I know. And I've actually, I've been trying to find the, my middle grade people on there. I'm like, okay, who else loves these? Mm-hmm. <laughs> doing little teaser posts and stuff like anyone else. Um, yeah. And some people hop on and, you know, I've talked about like Green Glass House. I think that one's by Kate Milford, I believe. Um, that one's really great. Abby Elphinstone has some amazing novels. Um, Sky Song, I believe, is one of them. Okay. Uh, so those are really good. And yeah, like classics like uh, The Mysterious Benedict Society. I love those books. You've read those? <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. They're definitely, I think that's another thing that like my book is a little inspired by <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I love it. That's such a good comp. It's a fun one. It is. It's so fun. I was obsessed with them. Yeah. So middle, middle grade is like underrated in my opinion. And I have a lot on my TBR for this year too. Like I'm excited to expand and just read more. Mm -hmm. Even like really popular ones. Like I have yet to dive into Keeper of the Lost Cities, but that one's top of my list too. And so many different, different ones I'm excited to try. And of course, why fantasy? Where would I yeah. be without that? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I think I just need to put them more like on my list. So I just never... I guess because when I go to the library, I'm in the YA section and sometimes they have middle grade books in there, but it's like I never think of finding them at the library or getting them on Amazon. I should probably make like a little list of like middle grade books I want to read and just read them more because I feel like that's another thing. Like I feel like I would talk about them if I was reading them, but I never read them probably because nobody talks about them, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, they're not necessarily top of mind because you're not seeing like a post every day about yes. like middle grade. Yeah, um, but they're so they're honestly they're like gems in a treasure trove. Like I'll go mm -hmm. to my local um, bookstore here that I love, and I will just immediately go to the middle grade section and peruse because they're all so inspiring. You know, usually I feel like middle grades get to play a little more. Mm -hmm. um, they can be more playful, and they can be a little bit more um, sometimes like quirkier ideas, you know, where you can yes. just get into a world that you've never heard of before or wouldn't be necessarily in the y in the YA section, you know. Um, so those are really fun. I'm also a huge, like I mentioned before, mystery fan. Mystery is like, love it. All of it. So good. Do you like mystery? I don't tend to read a lot of them. I feel like I would like them if I read cozy mm -hmm. mysteries, but other kind of mysteries I know I don't like. So I feel like that makes me stay away from the genre as a whole, which is crazy. Because I know I've read a few cozy mysteries before that I really liked. So that's another thing. Like, I've got a whole list of, like, cozy mystery books that I've discovered. You know, email newsletters or Goodreads. You know, you're always getting, like, random book bombardment from everywhere. And you're just trying to write them all down and not lose track. Um, so that... Yeah, but I've been meaning to, like, start reading more mysteries, and maybe it's about to be fall, so I'm thinking that's the perfect time for me to read a few mysteries. I mean, <laughs> yes, fall for sure. I have a good, um, I'll say this too, I can't stop talking about books. Um, I have a <laughs> fall recommendation. <laughs> um, have you ever heard of Hearts and Other Dead Things? By Other Dead Things. Who is that by? Margie Buston, if I'm saying her last name right. Oh, yes. I read one of her books. And unfortunately, I read so I read so many books while we were moving that I did not finish. And now I have to go back. And it was literally just because we were moving because I read most of Cruel Illusions. I think that's oh, that yeah. one I read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really liked it. But I just couldn't like it was like I knew I liked it, but I couldn't get into it. And it was just because we were moving because I had the same problem with Wishdress. Um, I loved it, also did not finish it. And I'm like, okay, as soon as like I'm done with this move, I'm gonna go back to the library and check these books out because I knew I liked it. I just could not, you know, when you're stressed out, um, yeah. you just, you know. Totally. So I do love her writing though. I remember that about Margie, uh, was Fustin, is that her last name? Yes. Um, Margie Fustin, yeah. I'm saying that right. I'm not sure. If I, I'm don't sure. Right. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but. I love her books. Um, yeah, her first one, Vampires, Hearts, or Dead Things. And I just loved the vibes. I really love books that are set in our world but have, like, mm -hmm. magical elements. And um, it's such a unique storyline, you know. The main character um, is really close with her dad, and they're, like, besties. And they... Um, they love, like, watching, like, vampire shows on TV and stuff and, like, movies and... Um, Sadly, he gets diagnosed with, with terminal cancer. And so the protagonist's uh, plan to save her dad is to find a real vampire um, so that maybe she can become one or he can become one. And he'll be saved. And I just thought, wow, what a unique take. You know, anything mm -hmm. like that. I mean, that combination. And yeah. he hasn't been touched sir, in some way or another. It was, it was emotional mm -hmm. right off the bat just for that reason. But it also... 
um, just has fun, you know, fall vibes. There's a romance that's really cute in it and a bit of a love triangle, which I don't usually go for, but um, the guy who, without saying spoilers, that I really wanted to win, definitely I was happy that he. Won. So um, yeah, that was that was good. But um, she, the character goes to New Orleans to find a vampire, and you know she tastes powdered sugar beignets, and you know walks past all of the stunning architecture, and you know there's like secret clubs and messages hidden in books, and you know it's just got all of this um, just fun kind of fall you know, magical vibes to it. So that sounds really good. I'm definitely going to be getting that this fall from the library because I'm pretty sure they have it. I know they had her other book and I, and I don't know why I think I picked up Cruel Illusions first, even though I knew she had written the other one first, because I think you posted about it on Instagram and the cover was so cool. And so the next time I went to the library, I was like, Oh, there's that book. And I grabbed it. <laughs> You know? Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you saw it. You're like, oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was good. Like, even though I didn't finish it, I just remember it just felt like it reminded me of, like YA when I was growing up and it just felt so nostalgic. And I like read it like really quickly, um, which sounds crazy because like I said, I didn't finish it, which is it was definitely moving because it was a, it was a weird space to be in where I was really enjoying a book. But for some reason, I just did not have the attention span apparently <laughs> like, people ask me that sometimes too like how do you find time to read books I think that's a big question a lot of people have mm -hmm. um yeah just because life can get so crazy and yeah. um, sometimes you might be in a bit of a slump like you're just mm -hmm. not really enjoying anything you pick up um you know how can you find the books that you really love um yeah and that's been kind of a I've discovered it's a bit of an art <laughs> for me, like diving into Goodreads and, you know, I definitely read reviews and yes, um, that doesn't always sway me. Sometimes it's the one star review that makes me interested in a book. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny, but, um, yeah, well, you got to find the ones that really, uh, yeah, that you can't put down and mm -hmm. you know, I have a hard time DNFing books because I'm very loyal. Yeah. Yeah, I only recently, because I used to never DNF books, and I only recently started doing it. And I found I actually read more because when it was in the case of, like, I just wasn't into this book, which hasn't happened a lot recently. I think I've been, like, vetting my books more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's helped me because then I've gotten into another book, and then sometimes I'll go back and, like, finish it, like, at a different, like, mood or something. Um but yeah, the last one I DNF'd, I'm actually like kind of mad because I really want to know what happens, but it just got too dark. I was like, I don't know if I can continue. I was reading um, Holly Black, The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. Oh, which, I haven't read it. Yeah, it's a vampire book. And it started out and I was like, ooh, this is dark. And so I was like, should I read this? I don't know. So I kept going and the concept was just so cool. And Holly Black is an amazing writer. And I just felt like it was dark, but I felt like it was speaking to a lot of like real world issues like reality TV can be very harmful, um, drug use and like teenagers who come from broken homes who are like kind of running away and making bad choices. Like I felt like the darkness was really um, interesting just how she was handling it. But the problem is I got past the middle of the book and you know, after the middle of the book is when it gets the darkest. And like mm. that part, I was like, it was already dark. It got so much. I was like, I don't know if I can handle this, but I keep thinking about it. I'm like, man, I really want to know what's happened. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> maybe I'll like see if somebody wrote out the whole plot summary or maybe I'll just, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe it was just my mood. Maybe in another mood, I'll be able to handle it. But I keep thinking about it. I'm like, I'm like, should I have DNF'd it? Should I finish it? I don't know. <laughs> It is a mystery sometimes. I know all this true because I'm like, okay, but I really want to know. <laughs> like, yeah. What happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Well, what are you reading right now? Are you currently reading anything? I am still finishing up The Cousins by Karen McManus. So that is the book that I'm currently reading. I'm trying to kind of... Um, 
I try to keep my reading list pretty mixed. So um, mm -hmm. just with all my favorites, right? So I'll do like a Y fantasy, a middle grade fantasy, a mystery of some kind, usually like adult, um, sometimes YA. Um, and then I'll try to add like a nonfiction book in there, you know, something that just helps like grow my faith or, you know, gives me tools for life or whatever it is, something to really like enrich my life. Um, yeah. And that's kind of pretty much all I can handle. Maybe like, so, you know, some months are just way too busy and I only get done, you know, one book or two books. Mm -hmm. Ideally, I'd love to read four books a month. That would just be incredible. But I don't know if that's possible for me right now in this stage. Yeah. Of <laughs> Especially since I'm also writing, right? So I try to work in, like I said, I have a writing routine. So, um, and I've, it's taken a long time to like develop my process and understand like what headspace I have to be in to write. So all of that is a factor in it. But. Yes. Yeah, no, and definitely the, di the different seasons of life. Yeah, because we've been kind of in and out of town all summer and just trying to figure out like a writing schedule and sometimes reading. Sometimes it's crazy. Sometimes I'll read a ton when we're in the car traveling places. And sometimes I just like I, I can't focus. It's too much. You know, it's it's really interesting that's <laughs> that you can read in the car because I get super car sick. Yeah, as long as we're on like a fairly straight highway, if it starts curving too much, I'm done. So then I'll be like, OK, audiobook time, which I am not a very good listener and my mind will wander off. So I don't prefer audiobooks, but I will do them. You know, sometimes they're nice, like you're doing dishes or eat, like you want to read, but you're too busy. Sometimes they can be really nice if you're in the car, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love audiobooks. I really have to like the narrator's voice, I found. I really have to connect yes. with it and enjoy it. Yeah, that's a big one for me, the voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of the narrators just sound, which is okay for some books, they just sound a lot like grandmas. I don't know why to me. And so, like, that works sometimes. But when it's, like, a YA book and, like, it's first oh. person and she's 17, it just, I'm the same way. Like, I can't do it. I'm like, okay, I've got to just read this book because... Yeah. The narrator isn't working. That's really <laughs> funny. Yeah, you're like, huh, this person's supposed to be in high school. They sound... <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's funny. Yeah. You have a writing routine right now? I do. I just developed one because I realized, you know what, my life has been such in turmoil with, you know, helping my dad move and moving out of his house and then moving in temporarily with my grandma and then just thinking about future in which I'll be moving into yet another house when I get married and then traveling I just realized that I wasn't getting things done and part of the reason is because things are so chaotic like I need structure so I recently started getting up earlier eating breakfast and writing first thing in the morning and then I do like my Instagram post and then from then on then my time is free to do like any other like responsibilities with my family or whatever whatever else i need to do but just like waking up earlier which i still haven't gotten used to yet i still can't get to bed earlier i try but it's like my mind will like be awake um but i'm hoping i'll just get used to it because <laughs> right now i feel very sleep deprived <laughs> but i'm like eventually i'll get used to waking up earlier right <laughs> good for you but it's been worth it it's been yeah. worth it. <laughs> the fact that you're actually getting up early, though, is amazing. I really struggle with that. I am definitely a night owl. And so I start waking up, like, as soon as the sun goes down. I don't know what, I don't know what the problem yeah. is. Um, and I love sleeping in, which is probably bad. But Me too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so right now, my writing routine is during my daughter's nap. So in right smack in the middle of the day. So I get done a lot on the front end. Um, you know, spending time with her, making breakfast, um, you know, maybe like playing outside for a bit, watering the plants and, you know, just connecting with her. I, I really try to make sure that I give myself like a good chunk of time where we're either like mm -hmm. reading books together or coloring or going on an adventure to the park or whatever it is, you know, walking and trying to involve some exercise into my day because I know I need it. Um, and also just mentally just getting out in the yeah. trees. We oh, have some beautiful trails by our house, so I love those, and it's really inspiring, too. I can listen to an audiobook while I walk her, or I can be thinking about what I'm going to write that day while <laughs> I'm in the stroller. Um, and then when she goes down for a nap, it's so funny. <laughs> At first, it was really hard to do this, but as soon as I put her down, I'd be like, okay, I'd like 
go over to my computer and I'm like, ah, I'm feeling intimidated. Like I'm, I'm too scared. What if, what if I, you know, what if I don't write anything good today or mm-hmm. ah, like, yeah. you know, sometimes those, there are the, um, it's the self-talk, like the negative thoughts that yeah. come in and try to keep you from getting the work done. But I just, after watching so many different interviews with authors and writers saying, Hey, you know, for me, it's, I treat it like a job. I really sit down Mm -hmm. and tell myself, you know what, I'm just going to sit here for 15 minutes, Mm -hmm. you know, even little itty bitty steps that would be silly not to do. Like, I'm just going to look at my book. Like I'm just going to open it up and look at it, you know? And that sounds so ridiculous. Like, why would you just sit there and open up your laptop? That's Mm -hmm. all you do. But that is enough sometimes. Yes. You're like, okay, I'm in it now. I'm starting it. I'm doing mm-hmm. it. And you see the success of yourself doing that. And you go, wow, I did that. I sat down. Like, and I'll set a timer. Like my writing is very time-based. I used to be word count based. I'm not anymore. I usually will go onto timer.com and I'll just put in one hour. I used to put in like 15 minutes, you know, cause that was all I could see myself being able to do. Mm-hmm. But honestly, the testament that I have to that is just, wow, a year of writing for 15 minutes a day. I've, I've written a book, you know, three times over a hundred thousand words each time you can get a lot done in 15 minutes a day. So yeah. Don't knock until you try it kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's like those small habits that really make a difference. Cause I think Rachel and I are always talking about this, like Um, How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And if you look at the whole thing, you get overwhelmed, but you have to babysit. So just sitting down at your desk. Like I remember when I was working, I used to work as a nurse's assistant in a nursing home. And so it was so stressful. I worked from six to two and um, I'd have to get up at like 430 because I lived 20 minutes away. I had to drive in the dark, Um, but I made myself a desk. And when I would get home, I'd be exhausted from my shift. But I would see that desk when I came in. And after a while, I couldn't wait to sit down at it. When I was coming in from work, even though I was exhausted, I was like, I cannot wait because that's like my writing time. And then another thing I did is, you know, you're talking about uh, writer's routines. I listened to a podcast called Writer's Routine, where it was just this guy interviewed famous or, you know, successful authors about their writing routines. And so I'd listen to that on my 30 minute commute home from work. And so it would just get me like so excited to write. And it's just like those little things. And then I finished a draft. That was the last time I finished a draft before this one. It took me six months. So I think that's my pace. And um, yeah. just doing that, you know. That is excellent. I Podcasts are super helpful. They can be so inspiring. Sometimes I'll reward myself after a writing session. Like if I write for an hour And then sometimes Mm -hmm. it's hard to turn off, you know, you're using different parts of your brain when you're being creative versus editing or Mm -hmm. just going about your day in life. So I really believe in transitions, you know, like, but I put Addie down for a nap and then I go to sit down and write and I'll like sit in the chair. Like literally it's a ritual. It's like sit in the chair, set the timer. Maybe sometimes I make tea, like I'll have my tea and it's just those, or I'll light a candle or something. And it's just like those little things that you do. And then when I'm done, you know, sometimes if I go to a coffee shop, sometimes, you know, my husband will mm-hmm. walk her home to a coffee shop and in the car, I'll put on, on the way home, like a masterclass course or something. And I'll just listen to it and it will, I'll put on a video on like rejection or something or like getting through editing. And it will just be straight up like encouragement for mm-hmm. 15 minutes, like cheering me on. Like you did yeah. it, put words on the page, you know, and that's enough to be like, yeah, I did it. And then I'm kind of in the headspace of a conversation and I can like come back to my family and, and then not a robot anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Coming amazing. out of it can be difficult too. That's something that you, that's a really good point. I need to start thinking about that more, you know, like how am I transitioning out of this and back into like, you know, regular life, you know, way like clocking out, you know, that's why mm-hmm. I love Timer, like clocking in and clocking out. Um, although it's always kind of in the background, right? We're always working out our stories mm-hmm. um, <laughs> throughout the day. Yeah, where ideas will pop when you're not expecting. That happens mm-hmm. all the time. And I have that running list of like, okay, here's yeah. all my book ideas. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I hope I don't forget this. Yeah, gotta write them down if you can't. Even a yeah. bullet point, I'm like, okay, this little idea. Yeah, yeah, you never know. Oh well, oh my goodness, Lexi, I feel like we could talk all day. 
<laughs> but thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We're going to have to have you on again with Rachel because I feel like the three of us could really just have a fun time hanging out. Um, I would but, love that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so fun to chat. Yes. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. I hope you got lots of good book recs and maybe some writing tips and photo tips. Um, make sure you follow Lexi. I'll put her links uh, where you can find her. You can follow her, keep up with her journey. And yeah, we will see you guys next week. Awesome. Bye. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it and tune in next week for another episode. And if you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a review so that other people can find us and we will see you in the future. Bye.